Sony is often at its best when it's at its weirdest, like making donut-shaped earbuds that are actually super comfy or a speaker and lamp combo that totally looks like a bong for some reason. But when it comes to the PlayStation Portal, the weirdness isn't just in the design, it's at the core foundation of a why does this thing exist? PlayStation Remote Play is far from a new feature, and it's something you can use with multi-purpose devices like a phone, tablet, or laptop at no additional cost. So why spend $200 on a dedicated piece of hardware for only this one feature? After spending a lot more time with the PlayStation Portal since my initial hands-on, I think I've finally figured it out. This thing is an air fryer. You may be asking, oh wait, how is a gaming handheld a home cooking appliance? Well, much like an air fryer, the Portal is a device that costs a not insignificant amount of money that does just one thing with only one way of doing it, it streams games off your PS5 via Wi-Fi, while other multi-use devices can pull the same task, PS5 Remote Play works on Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, iPad OS, and even the PS4. And also like an air fryer, you likely already have a device that does the same thing as the Portal, many home ovens offer convection heating, which is how an air fryer cooks. But I'll be damned if firing up some crispy chicken nuggets in 10 minutes or grabbing a quick game session while in bed aren't the same kind of convenience. The PlayStation Portal is all about conveniences, taking your games from your console and moving them around your house or even out into the world. However, with a reliance on Wi-Fi performance, your world of convenience comes crashing down as soon as you struggle with poor connectivity or when one of the Portal's many strange quirks rears its ugly head. In my time with the Portal, I've mostly had the bit just works experience, especially after a post-launch software update that seemed to make some small performance improvements. I connect it to my PlayStation 5 and within a few seconds I can bring my games to most parts of my home and play them fine on the Portal's crisp and colorful 8-inch LCD, complete with those nifty DualSense haptics. It sounds foolproof when I sum it up like that, but booting up the Portal and connecting, the only thing it does when you turn it on, is a very, your mileage may vary a moment. It may work fine. It may not work at all. It may require some tinkering with your home network settings. I've been lurking in the r slash PlayStation Portal subreddit to get a gist of the vibe from its community, and amid the troubleshooting help and people posting their W's about how great their portal works even on a road trip you occasionally see some massive frustration. For my home testing, my PS5 is connected via Ethernet and I have gigabit internet over a mesh Wi-Fi network with three Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro routers. Even with all of that, there are of course spots in my home where connectivity can get a little dicey. Sometimes, for what seems in the moment unexplainable, a game will freeze up and skip whole seconds of gameplay. I never quite know if it's because another device on my network is suddenly soaking up bandwidth, or there's more congestion from my ISP in the neighborhood, or maybe it's just a strange anomaly. You never really know why, but you have to live with the reality that every once in a while you might have your swings in Spider-Man 2 or your axe throws in God of War Ragnarok disrupted. It may test your patience at times, but it's the trade-off of relying on Wi-Fi in exchange for not taking up the family TV or bringing your game into a different room. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos.